If you ask me, Paulo, what is in being in the world, in you, that, that calls your own attention to you? I, I said, I, w- I would say to you that I am a curious being. That's, uh, I have been a curious being. But in a certain moment of, of the process of being curious, in order to understand the others, I discover that I have to create in myself a certain virtue without which it's difficult for me to understand the others. The virtue of tolerance. It is through the exercise of tolerance that I discover the rich possibility of doing things and learning different things with different people. Being tolerant is is not a question of being naive. On the contrary, it is a duty to be tolerant, an ethical duty, a, a historical, a political duty. But it does not uh, demands from me to lose my my personality. Even though it is for me, and it would be for me also a great honor to be understood as a, a specialist in literacy, I have to say no, because uh, my my main preoccupation since I started working 40 years, uh, almost 45 years ago, my main preoccupations had to do with the critical understanding of education. Of course, thinking of education in general, I also had to think about literacy, which is a, a fundamental chapter of, of education as a whole. Nevertheless, I also had the experiences, the strong experiences in the chapter of, of adult literacy, for example, in Brazil and the out of, of Brazil. But the more I think of what I did, what I proposed, the more I understand myself, much more as a thinker and, and a, a kind of epistemologist proposing a critical way of, of thinking and a critical way of teaching, of knowing, to the teachers in order for them to work differently with the students. Who, who says that this accent or that this way of, of thinking is, is the, the culture, culture, cultivate one? If there is one which is cultivated, there is, this is because there is another one which is not. Mm-hmm. So, do you see, it's impossible to think of, of, of that without, of language without thinking of ideology and the power. I defend the duty of the teachers to teach the cultivated pattern and I defend the right of the kids or of the adults to learn the dominant pattern. But it is necessary in being a democratic, tolerant teacher, it is necessary to to explicitly 
to make clear to the clear to the, the kids or to the adults that their way of speaking is as beautiful as our way of speaking. Second, that they have the right to speak like this. Third, nevertheless, they need to learn the so-called dominant syntax for different reasons. That is, the more the oppressed, the poor people, get the comment on the dominant syntax, the more they can articulate their voices and their speech in the struggle against the injustice. I am now almost 75 years old. And, the, and sometimes when I am speaking like now, <coughs> I am listening to Paul Freire 40 years ago. Maybe you could ask me, but Paul, look, then you, you think that you did not change? No, I changed a lot. I change every day. But in changing, I did not change, nevertheless, some of the central nucleus of my thought, of my, my the understanding of my own presence in the reality. That is, how, for example, could, could, could I change the knowledge which make, or, or, the, or the experience which makes me know that I am curious? No, I, I was a curious boy, and I am a curious old man. That is, my curiosity never stops. Maybe, <coughs> maybe in the last moments of my life, I will be curious to know what it means to die. My philosophical conviction is that we did not come to keep the world as it is. We came to the world in order to remake the world. We have to change reality. 